Hi guys, Lazar here and in today's video we are diving into the cool world of 3D printing. Inspired by Herschel Shapiro's amazing TikTok sculptures, we are gonna break down how to create something similar with Grasshopper. On his TikTok page, Herschel shares the complete creative process behind these incredible wall decorations. That process includes 3D printing, sanding, airbrushing and coloring, assembling and packaging. However, we notice that one important step is missing and that is the process of 3D modeling with Grasshopper. We also got a lot of requests from you guys to show you the exact process, so get ready, step-by-step -step tutorial coming right up. First up, let's set a point that will be an origin of a circle on the XY plane. Next, we are dividing the circle into equal parts and connecting those division points back to the center. We'll use the line end points to make 3D point arcs. For the third point of the arc, the midpoint, we'll use the evaluate curve component. Simply reparameterize the curve and set parameter to 0.5 to find the line's middle point. Here's why we used evaluate curve because the output provides a point and its tangent. We're going to move the point along a vector that's perpendicular to both the tangent and the z vector. To do this, we'll use the cross product. Once we nail the vector's amplitude, we can move our point to define our arc's third point. Next up, we'll divide the arcs and gather all the division points into one list we do this by using the flatten function on the points output. We could jump straight to the Vernoy cells, but to avoid weird elongated cells near the center, we are adding a cal duplicates component. If a point is too close to its nearest neighbor, closer than our set tolerance value, we'll remove it. This helps in keeping our points properly spaced out. If we want to add a certain level of randomization to make the cells look unique, we need to separate the point coordinates. For each x and y coordinate, we'll add a certain random value. First, we need to define the domain of the random numeric range. I will use a single slider and based on its positive and negative values, we'll create the domain. The number of random values will be equal to the total number of points. A seed number helps us set a sequence of random numbers and I suggest setting different seed numbers for the x and y coordinates. Finally, we'll add our first batch of random numbers to the x coordinates and the second batch to the y coordinates. This way, each coordinate gets its own unique twist and for the code wizards, a few lines of Python can do the trick too. By tweaking these points, we end up with a custom set that gives our Vornoi cells their own unique shapes. To eliminate any oversight cells, we use our initial circle as a reference. And here's the plan. We'll check if any of the cells intersect with the circle. If a cell does intersect, we'll remove it from our list. This way, we keep only the cells that fit within our desired size. We'll then convert the number of intersections into a boolean value, zero means no intersection, false value, and any number greater than zero indicates an intersection, true value. To reverse it, we'll perform a boolean negation. This means we'll flip the values, cells that don't intersect, previously false, will now be marked as true. This way, we keep only the cells without intersection points. Now let's draw vertical lines from each cell center. The line depends on the distance from our circle center. First, I will locate the center of each Vornoi cell and use as the align component to construct vertical line. We are going to measure the distances to the circle center and then remap these measurements to a new domain specifically between 0.05 to 0.3. This step is important as it allows us to control the lengths of our lines. Now let's create new curves with three points for a cool band effect. The first point will be at the start of the line, the second at the midpoint, and third 
will be based on the endpoint. To determine how our curves will bend, we need to construct two point of vectors first using cell center and circle center. We'll move the end point of each vertical line along a vector that's perpendicular to both uh, our two point vector and the z vector. For the vector length, we're going back to using the list of distances. However, this time around, we'll apply uh, these distances to a different target domain. We'll use our remap values to move the endpoints, giving us the third control point of our new curves. Don't forget to graph each input to ensure we get three points in each branch and make a curve. Set curve degree to 2. In the final stage, we'll divide these band curves and use division points as the origins for XY planes. These planes will act as our targets. We're going to position each Vernoy cell on its corresponding XY plane along the band curve. Next, we'll scale the cells using the center of each polygon as the center of scaling. The scaling factor will be based on values evenly distributed from 0 to 1 matching the number of planes on each curve. We'll first remap these values using graph mapper with Bezier curve, then remap them again into a new domain. The domain starts at 1 and ends slightly above 0, because if it's 0, the scaling won't work. Once we have our scaling curves ready, we'll use the loft component to create polysurface. The cap holes component is our go-to for getting close to B-reps. And for those who want to add color similar to our reference, the gradient component is your tool. Place the shortest distance in the L0 input and the longest in the L1 input. All the distances go into T input. The resulting list of colors will be used as the diffuse color for our geometry's materials. And there you have it, a step-by-step -step guide to creating a unique geometry inspired by Herschel Shapiro's amazing sculptures using Grasshopper. In the extended version of this tutorial, there is a ton more exciting content for you. We'll dive into creating Vernoy patterns on rectangular surface. First up, I will show you how to weld points that are close together. These tricks help us avoid short cell segments, making them much more 3D print friendly. Then, we'll use multiple points as attractors. With the help of vector fields, we'll bend our curves to craft even more interesting geometry. Plus, you will get to learn how to sort points, especially those not aligned in a grid first along X, then along Y axis. This sorting technique is super useful for organizing element in a specific order. Later on, this will come in handy when we engrave numbers on them, making the assembly process way easier. You can watch it on our Patreon page and support our work at the same time. With that, you will also get access to all our extended tutorials and project files. If you'd like to know exactly how to create complex projects like these, and if you're interested in step-by-step -step learning approach starting from zero, make sure to check our Grasshopper Complete course, where you'll find over 60 hours of video material structured in a form of video library, covering in depth more than 500 Grasshopper components through practical examples. And you'll have access to us personally, so we can answer all of your questions right away. The link is in the description.